Power Apps is always changing, so if you want to keep up to date with what to do with the OnStart property and how to use named formulas and what each is for, then watch this video. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is the OnStart property of your app. It's really well documented, loads of people use it. There is another option now for some of the things that we used to historically use OnStart for like, uh, for example, initializing the first screen and getting you to the right places. We've got Start Screen, a whole other video for that one. On start, it's one of the properties, you'll find it if you click on the app in your tree view and you pull that properties menu down there, you'll find it there. People use it all the time, I use it loads. My most common use is to set things that I'm going to use throughout my whole app. So maybe colours, maybe user items, so um, the, the current logged in user as an object, setting up things that you want to use and reuse through your app. The main benefit of it is if you're going to change things in future like colours, like you've got dynamic bits of data flowing through your app and you want to maybe create a space for those bits of data or maybe you want a collection to hold some information that you're going to use right throughout your app. It's a great place to store those things. But then big alarm bell, big warning, think about what you're putting into the OnStart because it runs once, it runs when your app loads for the first time. So if you've put a whole bunch of stuff in there that's going off getting data from SharePoint, from Dataverse, from SQL over there, whatever it is, it's going to take some time. So be very mindful that you may impact the user experience. So people use it sparingly, but it is a super valuable property for your Power Apps. It's been there forever. Really helpful, really useful um, property to hook into. I say that, I say useful because it's about being kind to your future self. So here, great example, I've set up a var primary colour, the one colour that I'm going to use my main colour, I could have dozens of colours, and I've initialised it. So this is a variable that I've initialised to the colour black, and I've used this set command. So that sets this variable up at the point where the app is first loaded, and lets me use it anywhere. If I want to go back and change that variable, I can just go and change it in one place and it will change everywhere. Now, you might have done this yourself if you're new to Power Apps. You might have done this. You might have gone, well, all right, uh, I'm going to do that, John. That sounds like a great idea. So let's just change this to um, Azure. Yeah, so here's the box down here that's that's tied to that variable. Well, nothing happened, John. What's going on there? So another thing about the OnStart, quick pop quiz. How many times does it run? When does it run? So if I press play, do you think it's going to change that color? Didn't run, didn't didn't change the colour. The reason is because it only runs the first time your app loads and runs once. When you're testing, when you're creating things, you can go to the ellipse here and you can run on start and bingo, there you go. That colour, that box just changed because that primary colour got updated. So again, I could go and change that back to something else. It wouldn't update until I run on start. So I simulate the act of my app loading up for the first time. So. On start, really useful, really helpful. Be mindful, it runs once, runs when your app loads, and it's a great place to initialize global variables. Okay, end of sermon, full stop. People know that. What you can also do, but you might not want to, is you might load data in using the on start. So here I've got an example where I'm going to create a collection, it's just a virtual pot of stuff, uh, a table if you like. Um, I'm going to call it today's user list, and I'm going to put data into it from this list called the recruitment tracker and I'm going to choose data only where a value equals new application. So basically I'm going to just filter some data at the start of my app loading because I want this data to be maybe on another screen, maybe three or four screens I want to use this. That's great. So remember at the point at which the app loads, this data gets pulled into the collection. Let's just have a quick look at the list itself as it stands now. Now there is nothing in that list. I've just emptied it out for the sake of this demo. Do a quick refresh to prove that. Nice and empty. Let's go back to my app. So there's nothing in it. So I'll just run that on start. We'll go and have a look at the collection. We can see today's user list, if you've got really eagle eyes there, uh, it's got zero rows. If I just view the table, it's got zero rows. So if I have data in there, fantastic. If I don't have data in there, well, OK, there's nothing in my collection. What about if I press play and I want to go and add new user? I've just set this up for you. Um, I'm going to click add. Okay, so my screen galleries here have been updated. Fantastic. Ignore the fact there's two of them. I'll show you why that is in a minute. That means that this data is now available in that list. It's in the list. Let's just go and prove that to you here in SharePoint. 
it's not asynchronous SharePoint, so you have to give it a bit of a boot and it will then show you the records that have just been updated. There it is. Fantastic. Um, you've got to be careful. So I've just added a new record. You'll notice here my today's user list still has nothing in it. Why is that? It's got, it runs once, it runs at the start of your app, and anything else that happens in your app, it's not aware of. So there's your big limitation to the on start. It's, it's useful for those times when you want to set something up and have it available. Maybe it's also useful for times when you want to set something up as a container, but you want to interact with it throughout the course of your app. So I'm going to show you one example here. I've got a button. It's a change me button. It says, all right, you've created a space called var primary color. Change the color to bisque. I think that's how you say it. Um, so you can do that with these variables. They're just they're created once. They're created at the start of your app. They're created as your um, as your app loads. But if I just show you this now, click play. I can press change me. It's a subtle color. I should have chosen a better color, but it's there. It's changed it to this beast color. So you can use these as interactive locations for different things. So I find if I want to play with bespoke themes, I want to maybe dynamically add data. To certain things I might set those variables in my global um, sorry in my app on start now the big thing here is what's happened everything in there is loaded into the memory of your app so it's taken up a degree of space does that matter maybe not if you've got little things like I'm showing you here if you've got bunches of data think about when you set that data you might not want to set all of your variables up up front you might actually only have certain variables relating to certain screens. So you might not choose to do what I've just shown you, but just to show you that you can interact with variables set up in that on start. Really nice, uh, nice feature. Go and explore, go and find your use case. But the big thing for me is being kind to your future self. Set colors up, for example, in your on start. They're there. You can interact with them. You can use them throughout your app and you change once. And then whenever you change it, so long as the app is then reloaded by somebody else or yourself, all those colors have changed. So it's just a nice uh, being kind to your future self tip. So what's the named formulas thing all about, John? Well, it's, it's a relatively new feature that we've got. Again, you find it in the app itself. And if you go to this little formulas property here. So what's it for? Well, it's slightly different. Um, named formulas, although they are recognized as existing when your app first loads, your app is just aware that something called the name that you've given it, and this is an example name here, um, is present. Nothing else happens. It's just it lodges it like a little distant memory at the back of its head. Then when you want to use it, that's when the app will go and do the thing that that named formula asks you to do or you've defined it to do. So why is that valuable? Well, like I said before, if you're loading a whole bunch of data at the very beginning of your app, your app might get slow. What if your fourth screen in your app is the one way you load loads of data? Well, then you call your named formula. It loads it there in runtime. That goes into memory. You can start to use it. So here's a great example here. I've got um, a gallery. Let's just scroll this down here. So this gallery here, now ignore the fact that it's being driven by a text input search. Um, put simply, I've got a gallery here which links to a data source. Fantastic, that's brilliant. So that's like dynamically linked to my data source here on the left hand side, just to show you the compare and the contrast. I've got another gallery which is effectively the same thing, but it's items property is sourced from the named user list. So imagine this was on my fourth screen. At the point that becomes visible, this particular function here, this formula, goes off and it will go to named user list and do the things that it needs to do. Well, where's named user list? Okay, it's in my, um, excuse me, it's in my app over here, getting a bit busy. Let's close this down. Uh, and it's just going to go and get the recruitment tracker data. So it's doing exactly the same thing as the gallery from a new data source, but just using that named formula. So if you want to defer the load of the data until you need it, for example, you could do it through a named formula. Um, I've just put this uh, this named at the start of it. You could use whatever naming convention you want. Just let me know that's what that is. So again, you can do stuff like setting up colors. So going back to that idea of initializing a color at the start of your app, well, why not do that as a named color in a named formula? Well, here's one reason you might not want to. Um, 
when you set named formula up, they will initialize, do the thing. When they've done the thing, you can't change the thing, if that makes sense. So for example, I've initialized this to dark golden rods, this lovely brown color. Now um, this, screw it, this button here, changes named color to black. That's the, the syntax, it's slightly different. So watch out for that, the syntax of named formula is slightly different. I've told it to change that to black. Does that work? I'm just gonna press Alt and change me. No. Once it's set, it's stuck, it's there, it's usable. It's called late, but sticks. Whereas the on start is called early, but is a bit more flexible. So just think about what the function and the form of your app needs to be, the features it needs to have, and what it needs to do. And that's where you'll start to think, do I need that like on demand? And does it matter if that thing changes? Here's a great example, um, just side by side really, of showing you that this never used to be the case, I don't believe, but like now, when you've got a data source here, and I've got a button here which I will show you, patches to that data source. Uh, I'm just going to patch the recruitment tracker, I'm going to put some values in from the data cards. Um, let's just see what the two methods actually do. And you'll be a bit surprised, maybe, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, let's just put one to one hold, put designer, click add. At the moment that patch completes, both the gallery direct from the data source gets refreshed because that patch effectively calls the data source, does the update and gets an update back and just instantly kind of reflects that on screen. But the same happens with the named formula. It will just go and it will read that data, know that data has changed and pull it back. So you don't get a different experience in that sense. But named formulas might be a thing that you want to do, particularly in that case, I don't know, maybe you've got some filtering that you want to do. So that thing that I showed you earlier in the app on start, uh, where I, for example, um, let me just find it. It was in the on start, not formulas. Where I uh, went and got the new applications, that might be better placed as a named formula. So let's just go and do that. So uh, let's just copy that. Um, and we'll place it into the named formulas area. Now, it's slightly different syntax, like I said, because we don't need to do the clear collect. We're just going to go and get um, a filtered set of data from um, that list. That's all we need to do. Now, um, let me just actually wire this one up, this um, gallery to that get today's data list. So let me just change that named get. Get today's users, uh, filter on the named. So really what this is going to do is going to filter on the name that I put in, but also it's going to filter on today's users because that's the formula that I used in the formulas. Um, so we're going to see something slightly different now. So if I just play the app, so we just do a quick refresh. So we're seeing we're not getting all the data back. Let me just add a new data, a new record in. We're going to make it match the application. Now you see the difference there. Now dynamically I've got that subset of data that I wanted because the named formula can interrogate the data instantaneously and find that answer for me whereas the collection created at the start of the app, done once, fire and forget, can't read it again. So you'll find your use. Named formulas are really useful, really helpful for that slightly more dynamic and interactive reuse of formulas. So I could set I could set up a filter, for example, to filter my data set based upon whatever criteria I like to have. Um, and then other people can reuse that through my app. So it's just a really nice example there, I think, of where you might choose to sway one way or another. You could do other things here. For example, you can interrogate user roles. So if it's me, set this thing to admin. I could, I, could, I could show or hide a gallery based upon whether I'm an admin or a user really nice and quickly and easily. But there you go. So I hope it's given you a little bit of insight into the kind of things you might choose to do, the kind of things you might not choose to do, and the fact that you've got some flexibility now in Power Apps to do some really quite clever things. Um, let me know in comments if you want to dig into particular use cases, maybe chuck one that you've got and we'll have a look at it, see where we would perhaps bias towards whether it's on start or whether it's the named formulas. But hope you've enjoyed that. See you in the next one and I'll be back soon.